Today on Locked On Red Wings, part three of three of our Who Stays, Who Goes miniseries, finishing up today on the forwards and whether or not Philip Zadina remains a Red Wing. You're Locked On Red Wings, your daily podcast on the Detroit Red Wings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Lockdown Red Wings podcast. We are your hosts, 97-1, the ticket producer, Brian Fisher, and Lockdown Tigers host and freelance journalist for the Detroit News, Scotty Bentley. And today, we're going to bring you the final of our mini-series on who stays, who goes, looking at the upcoming free agents for the Detroit Red Wings, and uh, trying to predict whether or not they get a new contract or get a little bit of a taste of free agency. I want to thank you guys for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every single day. We are free and available on all platforms. And Scotty, another daytime recording. God bless. Yes. God bless. Very much so. Yeah. No, I'm, uh, um, they're always clutch. We don't get to do them too terribly often. Maybe in the off season a little bit more. But. I feel like mood is always just so much better when you get to record when the sun is still up. I'm just like, I'm just so happy. You know, it's partly yeah. just because we still have the energy, but also because you, you look in, ahead and you don't have anything else ahead of you for the day. You're like, this is it. My day's over after this. Well, not for you. You have a you're you're in between double headers right now. Correct. Uh, so you have another. You got to go. You're going to the Tigers game tonight. The second of the double. I am. As yeah, we record Cody this Clemens on debut. Tuesday, It'll be, should hopefully really? be fun. The savior, the Detroit Tigers savior, Cody Clemens. <laughs> Riley Green still got a couple more weeks, brother. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're gonna do the Ford Group now for the Detroit Red Wings. And, you know, looking at the Fords, we have Mitchell Stevens, Philip Zadina, Sam Gagne, Carter Rowney, and Turner Elson. Now, Turner Elson is really only in this group because he finished the year with Detroit. Um, he played two games. I, I, I we're, we're talking about Turner Elson, so let's just knock him out real quick. Sure. Um, Turner Elson is a UFA at the end of the season here. Um He's 29 years old. He's played three games in the NHL, two of which were this season with the Detroit Red Wings. They're going to re-sign him to an AHL contract, two-way contract. He'll continue to be Grand Rapids depth. That's that is what it's going to be for Turner Ellison. Yeah, no, I I, I completely agree. Um, yeah, might as well get. I don't want to say get him out of the way early, but like you know, knock him out really quick. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing really to talk about with with a guy like Allison who played two games. Um, you know, he he got signed to for the remainder of the season back in April, and that was literally just because they needed an extra body. So they signed a guy who had been a career AHL guy to just the remainder of the season. So they're gonna the Red Wings, I guess, for the intents and pr- for all the intents and purposes of this conversation for Turner Allison, he will not get re-signed with the Red Wings, but he will get re-signed with the Grand Rapids Griffins. So he'll remain in the organization. So I guess we should clarify that and say it that way. He's not going to be with the Red Wings. No, he'll get re-signed with Grand Rapids, more than likely continue to be a depth piece for them. Because he, the only reason he's on an NHL contract in the first place is because the Wings were so injured at the end of the season last year that they had to sign him for the remainder of the season and call him up. Yeah, I, I mean... Yeah, a- absolutely. <laughs> not, not, not too much groundbreaking analysis, I don't think. Yes. They, there's your Turner Ellison conversation, guys. Yes. Um, but so I guess technically, where does he fall then? Here's here's a real pivotal question with Turner Ellison. Does he fall in the stay or go category? Because he technically is going but staying at the same time. Right. Uh, in our prediction. Uh, that's here. staying. That's staying. That's staying. He's staying with the organization, just right. not with yeah. an NHL club. Right. Uh, more than likely in our in our prediction. Um, he'll get, you know, a AHL level salary. Um, who do you want to go to next? So we have Mitchell Stevens, Phil Zidina, Sam Gagne, and Carter Rowney. All guys who are either Let's RFAs. You want to do Gagne? I think Gagne is yeah. a really interesting one. I do too. So Sam Gagne this last season played all but one game with the Detroit Red Wings. And I believe he's going to break 1,000 games next year with whatever NHL clubs he's with. Uh, he had 30 points, 13 goals, and 17 assists in those 81 games played with a um, relative to his teammates, because I'm not going to look at the expected goals for percentage for any of these players because it was all awful. So I'm looking at relative and see how he performed compared to them. Um, and he was a positive. He was, you know, 0.11 expected goals per game relative to his teammates. So him going out there on 
in a depth role and, you know, providing po- positive offense relative to his teammates is something to be looked at. And I've said it before on previous episodes that if he does return, that being the operative word, I could totally see him getting an A on this team because he's he's a veteran. Right. Uh, he's got a ton of leadership, a thousand games played next season, and he provides good scoring in the depth position. The question remains, though, Scotty, and here's the pivotal thing. This was the pivotal moment with the Mark Stahl's conversation yesterday. Is, is this is a team that's looking to take a step forward. This is a team that was bad down the stretch. Can you justifiably bring back Sam Gagne? Yeah, so the other interesting thing about this one is that he wants to come back, right? Like this, and and like openly, like we we talked about this when he made the comments. I want to say January or February, maybe a little later. I don't remember, but at some point in the season, he made comments saying that he wanted to return, and we talked about it. And and at the time, we were kind of in the boat of, oh, you know, if 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 Steve wants him back and if he's a semi-productive player still, a, f- a fourth-line dude that maybe wears an A wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Gagne's been been pretty productive the last couple of years, you know, f- given his role. Um, well, especially given his role. Yeah, no, for sure. And and I, I think that a one-year deal in which he can come back uh, – and I'm going to put – I'm going to say the same thing I, I said. Who did I say this about? Mark Stahl, maybe? I think it was Mark Stahl yesterday. I'm okay with bringing Gagne back if you're bringing him in to be like a fourth liner. But I would like some more talent better than Sam Gagne also coming in. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, I don't think we should be bringing back Gagne with the intentions of him being uh, an everyday third line winger either. So like, I am okay with bringing him back and, and I'll, I'll say, I'll say keep, like, I'll say that I, I would even want him to come back. I, I lean more towards bringing him back than not. But, um, at the same time, I don't think it should be, you know, I don't think it, I think it should probably be, yeah. in, in a fourth line role, maybe a step down in role, uh, from what he was last year, if we do bring him back. Yeah, and I mean, last year, so here's the thing with Sam Gagne, too, is he only made $850,000, and I believe right. the minimum in the NHL is 750 So yeah. considering that he got paid just barely above league minimum and scored 30 points, which, guys, I don't know if you know this, that's the same amount of points Tomas Tatar scored with the New Jersey Devils this year. That's insane value right? for a third or fourth line center slash winger, wherever you need him. There, So there is value there, especially at that role, but the problem is, as well, is you can get a lot of third and fourth liners that can do the same thing as Sam Gagne. So, I mean, I I will say bring him back as an adept role. He might get a little bit of a pay increase just because he you know outperformed his contract with 30 right. points in the bottom six. But I, I say bring him back. Deal, now, you have the money to do that. One-year deal, you're not yeah. losing out on, on keeping right. Sam Gagne. So I'm going to leave lean keep Sam Gagne, and I, I'll endorse giving him the A, absolutely, because I'm yeah, all for no, it. I'm, I'm fine with that, especially, I mean, you're going to lose both of your A's potentially, most likely even. So, yeah, you know, we talked about yesterday. So um, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, uh, somebody that everybody in the locker room talks about, you know, looking up to and, and kind of being uh, one of the one of the veteran leaders on this team. Um, and, yeah, if, if, if it's a one-year deal and it's about the same money and – you're going to bring in other talent to be ahead of him in the line. If all of that is true, then I'm okay with bringing him back. Well, and what's crazy, what's really nice with Sam Gagne too, is he was the, he was the Detroit Red Wings penalty kill. I mean, he For led sure. all Red Wings in penalty kill time or all forwards in penalty kill time with 190 minutes. And he even had a shorthanded goal in there, which is good for Sam Gagne. But, so there, there's added value in that as well. And that he granted the penalty kill for the Red Wings was not good. Like right. we have to ne- ne- make sure we qualify that, that the Red Wings penalty kill was not good, but him being the lead guy on that penalty kill is, does have value. So, you know, you look at everything that he brought to the team. He brought locker, locker room leadership. He brought 30 points on an $850,000 contract and he led the team in penalty kill minutes while also being a positive expected goals for percentage relative to his teammates in all strengths considered. So that includes right. the fact that he led the entire team in penalty kill. I mean, that's that, that is, you can't look past that. You absolutely sure. cannot look past that. So I think that 
Sam Gagne. I, I, I'm kind of convincing myself. I came in thinking like, yeah, I keep Sam Gagne. But as I'm having this further conversation with you, definitely leaning more and more towards keeping him another year. Um, yeah, absolutely. When we come back, we'll continue this conversation on what Fords we're going to throw away and what Fords we're going to bring back. Throw away is such a harsh word. I should have used a better, <laughs> a better, a better uh, verb there. But I'm sticking with it. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With all with the ever increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more? For the same parts from a cha local chain store or car dealership, Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for each customer. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck right locked on in there. How did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts you will ever need. Rockauto.com. Segment two, Lockdown Red Wings podcast. Scotty and I are finishing up our Who Stays, Who Goes series. This episode focusing on the Fords. Uh, we got, what, three more Fords to cover as we have Philip Zadina, Mitchell Stevens, and Carter Rowney left. And we know which of those three is going to be the longest conversation. <laughs> I feel like maybe we should keep Philip Zadina for segment three. You know, keep the listeners hooked. Keep you guys yeah, hooked. Right, right, yeah. Um, I, th I do think that there is an interesting conversation to be had with Mitchell Stevens in, and Carter Rowney, just strictly speaking, comparing the two. Um, Cause they're both kind of depth forwards. Now Carter Rowney, obviously having a much shortened season. He only had six points in 26 games played um, six, four goals and two assists. Mitchell Stevens had 27 games played six assists, no goals. So both of them had injured injury, shortened seasons, um, the you one start thing with Rowney? I, I, we can, the one thing with Mitchell Stevens too, is he's an RFA where Carter Rowney, I believe is a UFA. Um, well, I, yeah, I would be shocked yeah. if he yeah, was he's an RFA old, at 33. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, let's, let's start with, let's start with him. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's a pretty easy, uh, candidate to not come back. Um, not that he was you know, some terrible level of production or anything, but you're talking about a, a 33 year old depth forward. Um, those are, there's going to be a, a, a plethora of, of people at that talent level that are at that age or younger available in the free agent market. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's a pretty easy, uh, let go. No, no, nothing against him, no disrespect to him. Um, but just situationally, I'm not, Really sure it makes too terribly much sense to uh, to. I'm not sure he's going to be a high priority to bring back. No, I, I am a complete agreement with you. Um, he saw a little bit of a production peak between his two injuries. You mm -hmm. know, he went on that little stretch when he came back off off of injury and scored like three goals in four games or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it, he was a player that when Steve Eisman signed him in the off season, you knew immediately he was going to be a band aid player, and unfortunately, he. Unfortunately, because you, I don't blame him for getting hurt. Like you never can. Injuries no. just happen. But he was less than that just because he only played 26 games with the Red Wings due to injury. Right. Um, he made only $825,000. I think if this is just a player that you don't need to bring back next season, especially if you're looking to take a leap forward, not a leap, but maybe a step forward this offseason, try to make this team more competitive. I don't think Carter Rowney is part of that formula. Um, for sure. No, I, I agree. And, and again, it's not it's not because he was like terrible. It's just like again, the the, the situation and and the blueprint of the team and of him. It, it just I I can't imagine that that's going to be a super high priority on their off season agenda. That's all. Yeah, and I mean, in the twenty six games he did play, he was a positive asset on the ice. Going back to that relative goals for, for percentage, sure. but. I mean, just barely, and it's just he's just another depth forward, and we have a ton of those, especially as we have more guys who are ready to come up from the AHL level. Right. You just like like you would say, he's not a priority to bring yeah. back, and I don't think that they will. Um, Mitchell Stevens is a little bit more of an interesting conversation, just because he is an RFA. Uh, he for is sure. arbitration eligible, which means that he can f kind of fight a little bit for his salary. Um, but I, 
honestly, man, he was obviously had another injury shortened season, but there were a lot of stretches when he was on the ice. Like in 27 games, he only had six assists. I, I would forget that he's like even a Red Wing at stretches. And I don't mean that like in a mean way. He just did not do much on the ice when he was out there. And I would just left very, left very like meh. He was another one of those guys that Steve Eiserman got from a Tampa Bay Lightning team that was stacked with talent. And he was hoping that, oh, well, maybe this guy was underutilized and putting him in a role on a team here and get more minutes. He can prove himself. And obviously the injury is one thing, but when he was on the ice, he just really did not wow me in any stretch. So even though he is an arbitration eligible RFA, he made just 737,000 this past season. I, I mean, whenever it comes to RFAs, I'm always just like, yeah, whatever, just give him a contract. But I, I don't even know if I, given who could come, come this next off season. I don't even know if we need, like they could just not qualify him and let him walk. I don't right. know if we need a Mitchell Stevens on the Detroit Red Wings. Yeah. Well, I'll say that I, I don't expect this to go to arbitration. Yeah. I mean, that's certainly not, um, I, I, I don't think he's, he's, uh, uh, an arbitration, uh, caliber type of situation, I guess you would say. I, I definitely don't expect that to happen. Um, I will say when it comes to, you know, RFA and, and the potential ability to, to match another team's offer, uh, I, I mean, I guess if you let him walk and then like somebody offers him like just over a league minimum and you're like, Oh, like. We'll we'll keep him for that. I mean, I guess maybe, but uh, I'm I'm kind of with you with uh, with a lot of these depth forwards. Um, I'm we we had to patch it together so much, and they and they basically weren't here for seventy percent of the season anyway. And I'm not really sure you're losing too terribly much as is by keeping them around, um, or with the decision by letting them go rather. Uh, so. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. It's, it's definitely a little bit more of a debate. And if they did bring him back, I don't think it would be like the most shocking thing in the world. I, I think there's a, there's a decent ish chance that, that he is still a Red Wing on opening night just because of the RFA status. Right. And, and, and the fact that they can kind of feel what his market is before they decide to bring him back. But um, I, I, I would be less shocked if he left than if he stayed. Yeah, I don't know, man. It's this is just a really tough one when it comes to these RFAs, especially when you're trying to fill out a roster. I mean, RFAs that didn't play. Yeah, it's just well, because the thing, the problem is, is like we both are kind of un, we were just straight up unimpressed by his play, but also, you know, you let him walk. We haven't talked about Zadina yet, but right now we're looking at a roster with ten Fords on it. You bring up what Jonathan Bergen next season. You're at eleven. You sign two more, so you have that thirteenth guy, maybe to serve as a healthy scratch, but you know, does the value you you're giving up in Mitchell Stevens, whatever value that may be so easily replaced by bringing on, you know, another bandaid player, because you're giving up a depth piece to sign what another depth piece in the off season. Who's the, 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 the thing with Mitchell Stevens is he might not have impressed us much, but he's 25 year old depth forward. And that can just his age alone serves somewhat of a value over a guy like Carter Rowney, who's 33. So Correct. it's just, you, you let an RFA walk to bring on bring in a UFA who serves the same purpose, but is like maybe five years older. I don't know if that's really worth it, but I guess that that all comes down to the bigger picture of whether or not this team is looking to make a big splash in the offseason and move some of these other guys like Adam Ernie and Oscar Thunquist back down to that fourth line role, which admittedly is where they probably should play. So that all is like big picture stuff of whether or not this team is how big of a step forward this team's looking to play make this offseason. For sure. And and if they didn't bring back a single person that that we have mentioned this up to the like we have so much cap. <laughs> like it's 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 nuts how how much cap space this team is gonna have this free agency. So thirty five million. If they brought back nobody and just said we're just going to spend all of our cap and and bring in a bunch of you know like higher end free agents, that's something they could do. I'm not sure. I, I don't think that's what's going to happen. But like they have that in their back pocket if they really wanted to. So all of these guys are expendable in the sense that they can be that we have the resources to in theory, get an upgrade from all of these dudes. Yeah. I mean, just looking at 
the Ford core as it is. There's so many pieces that you consider depth pieces. So sure. I, in the end, will say Mitchell Stevens probably just you I'm can let him go. No, uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say more a more likely to return no than Rowney, but still a no. I'm gonna have to say no to that one, dog. Uh, <laughs> ridiculous. All right, we have come to the end. There is one more forward to discuss. The hottest topic forward, the most polarizing player on the entire Detroit Red Wings. His name is Philip Zadina. Yeah, the fact that that he is an expiring deal of all people on this team definitely is is I don't I don't I'm not hundred percent sure that this conversation is gonna be like super polarizing or like super uh like hot take esque, but I it's definitely it's definitely uh I don't know, funny I guess is the word that yeah he just happens to be part of this uh series. So he's twenty two years old. And in his season last year, he had 24 points, 10 goals, and just 14 assists. Definitely not the production you were hoping for out of him. But he is not arbitration eligible. He is an RFA. So you could just qualify him, and he has to deal with it. Um, looking at his contract, so far, he, you know, the last four seasons, he was on a, you know, I believe this was his entry level contract. $894,000 this last year with uh, a potential signing bonus, which brought him up to $1,744,000. He, um, yeah, he was on his entry level contract. I just confirmed that. I wanted to double check. I know it, w- it was likely it wouldn't be. So this is the first chance that he has to make a- more money, but I don't know how much more money he's going to get based on his. Um, production, I will say it is a very easy keep. Um, that's the part where you were hinting at probably not very polarizing, yeah. but when it comes to predicting his contract, that's where it gets interesting. Yeah, no, th- this, no matter what your opinion of Philip Zadina is, this is a very easy keep. This is not, you don't just let a 22 year old that, that you drafted <laughs> in the, in, in the top 10 in the first round, just like walk. What, you know what I mean? That's that. This is a. This is one. Honestly, this is one of the easiest keeps in this entire series that we are doing. Um, but it, it, the future. What you do with him when you do keep him is where it gets interesting. A, like you said, how much do you pay him? What kind of money are are, are you going to give him to stick around? Um, but B. I mean, you can keep him, and then if he goes on a heater, you can flip him. If you're still not a believer, even after the you know a little bit of a hot streak, you can bring him in and just build around him, and he ends up being good, and that's that. You can keep him, and then he continues the same level of production, and and it's not that great. And then you have to figure out what you want to do with him. I I think the more interesting question is the contract after this one. Right. That is that like what happens within this contract and at the end of this one that he's about to get, that is when it becomes more interesting. But as we said earlier, 22 years old drafted in the top 10, you're you're not, there is absolutely no, if you could be the biggest Philip Zadina hater ever, if you genuinely think that they should not let him go, you are, you are that that's a wildly whack take. Well, and it's just really weird too, because we keep, we keep coming back to this. Um, you know, we, we are understandably frustrated. You and I are understandably frustrated in the lack of p- production. Yeah, the we've whole seen fan base is rightfully Phillips so. Union. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And to the point where there are moments where I too doubt myself and like, I'm ready to call him, you know, the B word because of just the right. lack of production. And then you remember, well, he's still on his entry level contract and he's only 22 years old, just finally finished his fir- first full season. You're like, okay, well, there's still plenty of time to figure it out. But then you just, you remember like seeing the opportunities he did get this year and the line mates he did at times get to play with and he still couldn't figure it out while well, you have a 19 year old and that everyone's Lucas Raymond. No, it's, it's unfair to compare players to other players because everyone grows at different rates. For sure. And we understand that. But you, you just, it, it does. 
I, it just is a little bit tough to really figure out where he could be. I think he is the perfect candidate for a bridge deal. You know, give him a two-year bridge deal at maybe $2 million a year. So that gives him a slight raise from where he's at. Um, Eliminate that way, arbitration for a couple of off seasons. He'll be an RFA then at, at 24 years old again. So yep. then you can make a final decision on whether or not you want to keep him or keep him or ship him out or even give him another one year bridge deal. Um, so you can really incrementally decide how his progression has treated him. But because he has to play, so a player doesn't reach a UFA status until they've played seven years in the career or are 25 years old. And he is on year three of his of his NHL career because the fourth year didn't the first year didn't count because he didn't play the league minimum amount of games. So this is considered year three for him. So it's just really tough. I think bridge deal is the best way to go with him with a slight sure. pay raise um, as an incentive, and then because you have so much cap space again, it doesn't really matter. I mean, it matters. Don't overpay him as an RFA, which they won't do because he has no arbitration rights. Correct. But he's just such a He's just such well, an enigma yeah, to figure out because he's so young, and this is his first. He's just now getting out of his first contract, but he's also got. It feels like he's got way more experience than he actually does at the NHL level because of how weird these last three seasons have been for him because of COVID and everything. Yeah, yeah, no, it, it's it's. He is he he will forever be one of the the most polarizing player on the team and. That that's not going to change, uh, and it's not going to change because he's definitely going to stay. Yes, and I I don't think that this contract, like I said earlier, is a super dramatic decision. I think whether you you hate the guy or love the guy, it's a pretty easy decision to bring him back and and see what's you going forward. The deal after this one is when it's going to become a a very real uh, conversation. So to recap, our who stays, who goes mini series that we have here. We are bringing back on the Ford core, Sam Gagne, our prediction, and Philip Zina being an RFA. We let walk Mitchell Stevens and Elson Turner, and by walk, let walk Elson Turner, he'll sign with the Grand Rapids Griffins more than likely. Um, so that leaves you with one, two, three, four, and five, Rowney. six, seven, eight, and Rowney. He's walking. Nine, ten, eleven forwards on the Ford core, which leaves room for an AHL player such as Jonathan Bergen to make his way to the NHL roster and maybe sign a player in free agency or two. Yeah. And then the defensive core out of the free agents, we are keeping just Jake Wallman. We are letting Ole Levy, who's an arbitration eligible RFA, Danny DeKaiser and Mark Stahl, who are both your alternate captains and UFAs walk. So that leaves you with one, two, three, four. I, I still struggle to count Stephen Comfort because I can, I, I would be surprised if he's on the NHL roster. For sure. Come the, I mean, they signed him to an NHL contract. I just don't, that one, it's kind of weird to me. But one, two, three, four, five, and six defensemen, because I will count Comfort because he is still technically on the NHL roster right now. That leaves you six defensemen. So it leaves you a little bit of room to bring up a Simon Edvinson or, and sign maybe one more defenseman because Osterley and Comfort, I would imagine, would be your healthy scratches, your extra guys. And then on the goalie core, obviously, Nadelkovic remains because he's still under contract. And then you let Thomas Grice walk. And you re-sign Magnus Halberg to a backup role, which is the re the most speculative reason why we assume that he is right. Uh, he got signed in the first place was because they were just trying to get in early on a guy who might be a coveted backup goaltender in the uh, upcoming free agency market out of the KHL. Um, oh, can't forget Robbie Fabry on the injured reserve. He will be playing, so that reduced the amount of forwards you can sign or bring up by one. Sure. Yeah, in theory. I, I also, I, I will say with the forward core, I'm not sure I, and th this, this might be, this might, you know, I, I might sound dumb on opening night. I, I don't know if you, you will, but for different reasons. <laughs> Fair enough. I don't <laughs> think you, uh, you, you go into opening night fully expecting like all these guys to be here. Like, well, yeah, but uh, Go in with like Valeno and Bergeron to like on opening night, getting like starting. Hey, you have a solidified spot in one of these four lines. I'm not sure that that is what the the plan is, and and I'm sure they'll both end up getting plenty of playing time this upcoming season. 
but on opening night, like you are, the plan is in a perfect universe, everyone's healthy, every, everything works out all year to, to go into opening night thinking that Valeno and Bergeron are both solidified starters on this team. I'm not sure that's the case yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't necessarily know that either. We're obviously making a lot of assumptions with this whole mini series as a whole. I mean, this is just our opinion on how this is going to work. For sure. I'm not, I wasn't trying to suggest that Edvinson and Bergen were going to have a guaranteed spot, but I was just, no, no, I, I get what you're to, saying. I was just yeah. thinking out loud with it. Like when, yeah. when you, when you go, when we start our free agency talk, um, I'm, uh, I'll, I'll, it'll be interesting to see what, what kind of, um, blueprint that they're, they're trying to build this year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was a, definitely a fun little t- take a look at. Oh, yeah, it's nice. Players. It's, it's, uh, it was a good idea. It was a good idea. Yeah, th- th- thanks. Appreciate it. Good talk. It was a good idea. <laughs> what the hell? Okay. I don't know. I just didn't want to, like, stroke my ego. So I was like, well, I did. So Yeah, but, you know, trying to be humble. Okay, it was a really bad idea. I'm thank sure you. Thank you. Thank you. That, <laughs> now that feels more natural for our dynamic, to be honest. <laughs> like, I like that better. I like it better when you're mean to me. Um, <laughs> uh, any final thoughts, my man? Um, I don't think so. We ball. We do ball. Absolutely, we ball. Have fun at uh, the second game of the doubleheader. Who's pitching? Who's this on the mound? Joey Thanks. Wentz is back. I'm sorry. <laughs> but man, we, we have five starting pitchers heard, and it's a doubleheader, and we haven't had an off day in a while, and we don't have an off day all week. So, like, with the exception of Tarek Skubal, isn't every other starting pitcher from the opening day hurt? Correct. Yeah, we, we on opening day we had six actually healthy, and now we have one. Yikes. Which is why Ronnie Garcia started game one and Joey Wentz is starting game two. Yeah. I'm really sorry, man. I'm really sorry about the Tigers. Cody Clemens debut. We're going to have a great night. They have, listen, they've had, they have won, what, what was it? Like, they've won. Well, it was four of our last five, but we lost game one. So now so it's four of our, four last, of our six. last six. Hey, still, you haven't lost the series yet. It's a five game series because they're playing a crap ton of double hatters. And there's, they're heating up. We can only hope. <laughs> listen to the defeat in this man's voice. Yep. <laughs> Pretty much. Thanks for making Lockdown Red Wings your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Lockdown NHL. Lockdown NHL covers the playoffs like no other. Hear the latest news and opinions from local experts every Monday through Friday. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'll be back with a new episode for you tomorrow. Same time, same place. It's your team every day. Every day.